Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Kmart. I've been waiting all year for that. Yes, because of my stole. Blue lights. Yeah. For those of you that don't know, this is a stole that I wear only four times or for four weeks in the year, so it's special. And the color is blue. And displayed prominently is a candle, which is a light. So it's a blue light special. Oh. And that's Kmart, OK? Yeah. That's Kmart, yeah. So Kmart may have been gone, but it still lives on. Um, anyway, uh, we have a few announcements. Grace has one before I forget. Coffee with the girls this Saturday at 9 o'clock in the fellowship hall. OK? Coffee with the girls. All right. And there's, do we have breakfast with the boys, I assume? Yeah, I assume we're going to, yeah. Same place? Next Saturday, uh, 9 o'clock, Our Country Kitchen. Yep, next Saturday, same place, Our Country Kitchen. Um, if you get there at 9, you're late. You know, it's always that way. I don't know. But it is 9 o'clock. Um, other than that, do we have anything, that we, anything else we need to be aware of? Wednesday night. Oh, Wednesday night, that's right. Wednesday night begins, uh, thank you. See, that's why my mind. Um, Wednesday night we begin our, our Advent services. We'll be using Holden Evening Prayer. Um, they're at 6 o'clock. Um, it's a short service, but a time to reflect during this season of Advent. So, Saturday at 6 o'clock. Saturday, so, uh, Wednesday. Saturday at 9 for the coffee with the girls and breakfast with the boys. Different locations, of course. Um, and then Wednesday. Anything else? Oh, yeah, that was the thing I was going to forget. We have a new liturgy today. We're starting a, a different, for the season of Advent. So for the next four weeks, we have, um, it's all in, in your bulletin in front of you. And the words are there. They also have the page numbers to the hymnal, uh, if you care to, to check out the music. But um, it's from setting 10. Um, and it's a very simple uh, liturgy, but uh, shouldn't be a problem. Now, did I forget anything else? Okay. And Paul is standing back here. He's lurking around the candles because he's a candle lurker. So, uh, because also, as we begin the season of Advent, we begin the lighting of the Advent wreath, and that is also portrayed in your bulletin. And so, on this first Sunday in Advent, uh, we await for the promise to be fulfilled. And it comes from Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And as we begin this Advent season, the psalmist this morning reminds us that our four-week journey of this Advent time begins in the house of the Lord. And the house is not merely a structure of four walls, but it refers to the whole community of God's people, the whole community of God's promise. And so together we pray for peace that God promises that will come among us. And in our first lesson from Isaiah, Isaiah gives us a picture of what that community of promise will look like. He says things like, teach God's ways, walk in God's paths, uh, swords and plowshares spears into pruning hooks, walking in the light of the Lord. So as we begin, let us pray. Lord, we await your promise to be fulfilled among us all. Give us your light to banish the darkness of this world. Amen. Amen. One candle to watch for the The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
please join me in the prayer of the day. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening dangers of our sins and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from Isaiah 2, 1 through 5. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, come. Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come let us walk in the light of the Lord. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built at a city that is an entity, unity with itself, to which the tribes of the Lord, the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be with you in your walls and quietness within your towers. For the sake of my kindred and camp, I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. The second reading is from Romans 13, 11 through 14. Beside this, Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to you us now than when we, were, when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and lice licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. 
For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Oh, that's good. Well, this morning, in addition to uh, being the first Sunday in Advent, it's also, as I may have mentioned, is the um, is the first Sunday of the of the church year. And so, you know, on New Year's Day, you wear funny hats, eh? and you make a some. I couldn't find my New Year's stuff, so the street. That shrieking chicken will have to do it. So, now that the festivities are over, um, yeah. so on this first Sunday in Advent, we anticipate the coming of our Lord. And we anticipate him in a twofold manner. And it's important. It's, there's two ways that we anticipate his coming. First, we anticipate his coming in just a few weeks as a child in Bethlehem. And we are anxiously anticipating that arrival. But also, our vision also goes beyond that as well, and anticipate his coming again at the end of all time. And that is how we begin this new year, with this twofold vision to see the, the God who loves us in this remarkable way who comes to us immediately and yet at the end of all time as well. And we do that double vision in order to prevent ourselves from going down some crazy roads about understanding God's love and compassion. And so this morning, our lessons help us to look at what that is all about in the coming of our Lord. In our gospel lesson, oh my gosh, um, it's a crazy one. But the simple message of Jesus is that that time is coming and nobody knows. Not even the Son, he says. Only the Father. And then he goes on to, to give an illustration of that. And we have taken that so far out of context. And some have taken this, this passage and a, a few others and made a whole big story about it. But it's really just a simple illustration that Jesus makes. His clear message is, be ready. Be ready for the coming of your Lord. And our lessons help us understand what it means to be ready. But for him to be ready is to understand that it is going to be unexpected. That it'll come when you don't expect it, just like in the days of Noah, he said. But be ready. And to be ready in Jesus' understanding is simply to anticipate the presence of God each and every day. And so his message, apart from whatever else we want to try to make out of this, is simply, we don't know. You won't know. So simply, each and every day, be ready for the coming of the Son of Man. And Paul continues that same kind of, kind of message. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, is writing about, uh, just before this, about encouraging the, the church at Rome to, to focus on God's love and the love that God has given us in Jesus Christ and to live in that love and to live out that love with each other. And then comes our text. And he says, you know, and it's kind of a crazy statement, I think. Um, we're nearer today, near, nearer salvation than we were yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, salvation is nearer um, today than it was before. 
And I think Paul must have really liked wine or something. I, I don't know where he got that. Um, but he's trying to point out the fact that the end is coming. Christ will return. And they all anticipated Christ would al already have been there. Uh, and the end of time would have uh, occurred. And we don't really exist. But that didn't happen. Uh, just a uh, spoiler alert. It didn't happen, OK? Um, but his message was very clear. Change your focus. Focus on love. Loving each other as God has loved you. And put aside all the works of darkness. Put aside all those things. And of course, there's your favorite words, debauchery and licentiousness. You just, I mean, I know pastors that just love when this lesson comes just to say those words because they're poetic or something. Um, anyway. He says, put away all that stuff. And what really matters is to put on the armor of light. And I think that's an interesting image he uses, an armor of light. It's not a defensive mechanism. It's an offensive mechanism. The, the armor is an armor of light to shed forth the light of God's love in all that we do. So he simply says, put on that armor of light and be focused on God's love and grace in all that you do all the time. And there, one will be ready for the coming of the Son of Man. And then in Isaiah, Isaiah has a marvelous image. Isaiah, and he's in a tough spot, because Isaiah knows what's going what's gonna to happen, that an exile will about to take place, and people will be very upset, and their whole lives will be turned upside down. But here, he shares a vision, a vision of, of God and God's grace and love for us. And the image is that of Jerusalem, of the Mount of Zion, the mountain where Jerusalem uh, exists. And he says that will become the highest mountain that there is. To me, it's kind of like Sierra Blanca, you know? You, you can see it all over, and it's, it's very prominent. And that's the picture he wants people to understand that the mountain of the Lord will become the highest point and all people will be drawn to it and all people will come and when God comes and he comes to that mountain all people will come people from all walks of life from all backgrounds will come to learn the wisdom of the Lord to walk in the paths of the Lord it is a grand and glorious day when the Lord comes and so when the Lord comes, there's no more striving. There's no more scratching your head and trying to figure out how to be faithful to God because it will all be there. The wisdom and the very presence of God will be among us. So he, too, encourages people to walk in the light of the Lord. Now, these are very usual words that we hear during this Advent season, words about Jesus coming. But what do we do to be ready for the coming of the Son of Man? Both as a child in Bethlehem and at the end of all time. What is it that we do to be ready? Well, if you look at Paul's word to the Romans, at the end he says to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's Luther's advice as well. In your hymnal, on page something or other, 1166, I'm sure. Uh, that's, I don't know why that number sticks, but in Luther's small catechism, he talks about the morning and the evening prayer. And Luther's advice is when you rise in the morning to make the sign of the cross, to impress everybody who's around you, right? Yeah, there's nobody there. And the same thing when you go to bed at night, to make the sign of the cross, he said, in order to remember whose you are, to remember your baptism. And Paul reminds us to put on our baptism, to put on Christ, to live in that, that love of, that God has given us in Jesus Christ, and then to pray, to put on the Lord Jesus Christ each and every day as we begin the day and as we end the day. And what do we do to be ready for the coming of the Son of Man? This morning we come to our Lord's table. And there, in simple bread and simple wine, 
It's not the taste, it's not the texture, it's, it, it's none of that. It's the very presence of God in, with, and under those elements where he comes to us to remind us that we are forgiven, that we are free, that he loves us. And that is indeed a way to make ready. Now, we may want to wear silly hats or make shrieking noises from chickens or whatever, or noisemakers if you really can find them. But it's all about rejoicing for the coming of the Lord. And that is what we do the best. And so as our hymn of the day reminds us, we fling wide open the doors for the coming and invite our Lord to come. And so as we begin this Advent season, let us begin in prayer. Lord Jesus, master of both light and the darkness, send your Holy Spirit upon our preparations for your coming. We who have so much to do seek quiet spaces to hear your voice each day. We who are anxious over many things look forward to your coming among us. We who are blessed in so many ways long for your complete joy that you bring in your kingdom. We whose hearts are heavy seek the joy of your presence. We are your people walking in darkness, yet seeking the light. To you we say, come Lord Jesus. Amen. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God of all your children, everywhere who cry out for mercy, awaken the global church to the urgent needs of our times. Break down barriers of culture and custom and unite people of all faiths in your redemptive and healing work. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth's beauty and abundance is your gift. Teach us your ways of sharing resources and caring for life. Guard fragile habitats. Preserve the wild places and protect endangered plants and animals. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, you judge the nations. Beat our weapons into tools for serving the na our neighbor. Strengthen the resolve of all who work for the end of to war. We pray for lasting peace in the land of Jesus' birth. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of loving kindness you deserve fullness of life for everyone fill those who hunger comfort the grief and attend those near death please help and bring hope to any who are sick and needing your care god in your mercy god of community you are present when we gather in your name guide congregations in transition or conflict give wisdom to congregational councils call committees, and ministry leaders. Keep us alert to unexpected opportunities for mission. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, your goodness is everlasting. We give thanks for the lives of the faithful who now rest in you. We trust that you will bring us into the company of all saints with rejoicing. God, in your mercy, God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of that peace with those around you.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our calling and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, to our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body and it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. And it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Be strong. Do not fear. Here is your God who has come to save you. Come for all is ready.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood remain with us as we seek to take the message of love and grace into the world. Amen. Faithful God, in, in this, this meal, meal you have, have remembered been. your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, the eternal word, who dwells with us in Jesus and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, Christ is near.